Have you ever wanted to go to Celestia? Ever wanted to visit Conria? Preferably before it was destroyed by Celestia, perhaps. In today's video, we're going to explore some hidden areas in Genshin Impact that could become playable in future patches. The tallest mountain in Teyvat that makes Dragonspine look tiny? A forbidden area full of ancient fallen gods? Or perhaps an evil experimentation facility which could be the possible boss domain of yours truly? Which of these areas would you want to become playable? I'm your leafy lord Shira Minzif, and I read the Genshin Impact lore so that you don't have to. But first, I have to tell you about something new that I saw when I was scrolling on Instagram. I saw an ad for what I believe is the most beautiful game I'd ever seen. I'd been wanting to try out the new beta because of how gorgeous the art style and gameplay were, so you can just imagine my excitement when they offered to sponsor today's video. So, today's video is sponsored by AFK Journey, an all-new RPG title crafted by Lilith Games, the creators of the original AFK Arena, and will be officially launching on March 27, 2024 on both PC and mobile. AFK Journey is an ethereal fantasy RPG game with its distinctive visuals, intricate gameplay mechanics, and an added dimension with its PC-compatible side-scrolling elements. Wrapped into the 3D canvas art world of AFK Journey, everything breathes with life. In this magic land, embark on a fantasy quest as Merlin, gathering heroes across six factions and formulating winning tactics with different teams. Reunite with AFK Arena's beloved characters and discover new ones. From Golden Wheatshire to the Veduzo Mountains, all explore diverse huge maps, solve fun puzzles, and meet interesting NPCs with effortless one-handed gameplay. Beyond the familiar resonance of AFK Arena's heroes, AFK Journey adds equipment resonance. AFK Journey's official release will give you access to over 40 heroes for free, including epics giving you a wide array of RPG strategies. Additionally, you will receive 200 plus free pulls by progressing through the game and completing events such as a 7-day login. Use the link in the description below to download and play AFK Journey today, and use the code AFK Journey Creator to get 200 diamonds and golden coins for the beginning of your new journey. Thank you so much Lilith Games and AFK Journey for sponsoring today's video. First up is Dornman Port, and this is actually one area that I've been asking for for a while. If you look at the map, you'll notice that every main region in Genshin has a port, all except Munstad. And no, this little thing is not a port. One of the earliest mentions of Dornan Port happened in an interaction between Eula and Yanfei. Information about their encounter comes from their voice lines about each other in Eula's character story 3. Eula and the Knights of Favonius' reconnaissance company track down a dangerous hidden cargo belonging to the Abyss Order at Dornan Port. Cargo that was planned to be shipped to Liyue Harbor. At that time, Yanfei was working as a consultant for the merchant vessel. Unaware that this cargo was from the Abyss Order, she started investigating it and found something. A discovery that put her in great danger. She was saved by Eula, and the two then cooperated to investigate and capture all the Abyss Order operatives hiding in the vicinity of the port. If you want to quickly dip a toe into theories, there's a possibility that this something Yanfei saw in the Abyss Order cargo was the upside-down Animo statue of the Seven. The We Will Be Reunited Archon quest where that statue appears does take place in Liyue, where the Abyss Order cargo was meant to be shipped. Since we're in Mondstadt, I'll mention a location I really, really want in the game, but this location is heavily debated since some people don't actually think it exists. The Dandelion Sea when you talk to Sage, an NPC in Mondstadt, he mentions his fascination with the book series The Fox and the Dandelion Sea. In this story, we learn of a boundless sea of dandelions that existed in the middle of nowhere, and foxes who could turn into humans. It's speculated that this place could be where the Kitsune originally came from. This book series consists of 11 volumes, which is long, I know, but something strange happens in the final book. The story loops back to the beginning, a time loop. Honestly, Venti's story quest Act 2 just needs to come out soon because we already know he has crazy lore connections with Genshin's Goddess of Time. But this potential sea of dandelions reminds me of the sea of Intevat flowers that we see Traveler and their siblings standing in during the Travails trailer. The sea of Intevats is somewhere I'd love to see a potential Danes of boss fight happen. As a quick recap, the Intevat is Conria's national flower, but back to Monstad. The Dandelion Sea might be teased in Mona's Destiny cutscene along with Dormant Port during the Summer Odyssey event. Whether in a dream or in reality, I'd love to see the Sea of Dandelions come to life. Next is Mont Isis and Fontaine. 
Mount Isis makes me super excited for a potential Fontaine expansion because Mount Isis might be the tallest place in Teyvat. And it's speculated to be even taller than Dragonspine. According to ancient records, a magnificent palace was once built here, and though the great tower that once stood here is now gone, the flowers still remain. Isis is the name of a Celtic god who was worshipped primarily in ancient Gaul and Britain. In real life though, this god has a way more sinister story than the calm flower meadows described in the game. Isis required human sacrifices, and these sacrifices would be tied to a tree and flogged to death. He was also commonly depicted as a woodsman cutting a branch from a willow tree. This would be interesting if the civilization that lived on Mount Isis was similar to Selvan Degnir, Dragonspine's ancient civilization. Salvin Dagnir had an Irminsul tree before it was unceremoniously wiped out by the Skyfrost Nail. So all this tree imagery tied to Mount Isis' namesake is probably not a coincidence. Since we're in Fontaine, honorable mentions are Beta Harbor and Petrichor, which I've already covered in a couple of videos in the past. The Mer Javari is a domain in Tevat presumably located in a desert near or close to Natlan. It is described as a sea of ashes where the wind does not blow and contains a scorching sea of lava. This place is mentioned briefly in Bennett's love poem during the Windbloom event and in the Lava Walker artifact set. A sage named Lava Walker was said to have created a circlet that could withstand the sea of fire within the Mare Javari. This place is also referenced again in Venti's story quest when a famous Monstad adventurer named Stanley traversed the Mare Javari and unfortunately lost his life while saving his fellow adventurer Hans Archibald. Now there's something sus happening in the Mare Javari. The Lava Walker artifact set mentions the Mare Javari being a flaming sea, but Stanley refers to it as a sea of ashes. So if one is flaming hot and the other is ashes, how can they be the same place? We find a possible answer in the Wanderer's Troop set. The Wanderer's Troop was a group of musical travelers who tried to lead a failed rebellion against Monstad's cruel aristocracy a thousand years ago. The Chinese version of the game describes Mare Javari as the following. In the Lava Walker set, Mare Javari is described as raging flames. In the Wanderer's Troop set, it's described as smoldering, which means by the time Stanley and Hans Archibald traveled to the Mer Javari, it was already a sea of ashes. At some point, the Mer Javari's flames died out, and I'm seriously wondering if a certain floating island had something to do with it. I mean, it's not like they've caused catastrophic climate changes in the past, <laughs> right? Speaking of Celestia, the next place I'd love to see is a dark sea. After the end of the Archon War, the losing gods who refused to be under the jurisdiction of the Seven Archons fled to this area known as the Dark Sea. This place is incredibly mysterious, but apparently we've already visited a part of it. As a quick recap, there are four major events that have happened in Genshin's ancient history that you should know about. The Dragon Sovereign War, the Primordial War, the Archon War, and the Cataclysm. The Dragon Sovereign War was fought between Teyvat's first god, the Primordial One, and Nuvulet's family. The Primordial War was between the Primordial One and a being known as the Second Who Came. The Primordial War was so devastating that parts of the human civilizations at that time broke apart and fell into the Dark Sea. One of these sunken civilizations being Enkonomiya. This information is stated in the Jade Branch of a Distant Sea where it's mentioned Orobashi fleed to the Dark Sea after the Archon War and became the new god of a sunken Enkonomiya. But do you know of a place that could be just as dark if not darker than that? Heresis. Heresis is an underground experimentation facility of the Fatui which appears in the Genshin webcomics. This facility was used for experiments where captured test subjects are brought to fight against unknown creatures. Il Dottore performed torturous experiments here, one of them on contender 139 Anthony. If this place is anything like the Elazar Hospital in Sumeru, then it's certainly going to be incredibly sinister. In the abandoned Elazar Hospital, we learn of a man named Abbas, who is the only known survivor of Il Dottore's cruel experiments in that hospital. It's speculated that Abbas was injected with Archon Residue, much like the horrible treatment Kale went through. If I had to rank all these places in order of which one I'd love to see the most, it'd be like this. <clears throat> I mean, like this. Mount Isis at number one since I think mountain exploration on a vastly larger scale than Dragonspine would personally be really cool. Then to be greeted by a field of flowers at the end of this particular journey up the mountain is so my aesthetic and it's super free rencore and I like that. Number two, the dandelion sea because I love flowers. 
Number 3, Dormen Port, and number 4, The Dark Sea, because of the huge lore potential for both of them. Number 5, Heresis, since I love evil spooky things. And finally, The Marriage of Ari. I love the lore potential, and no offense to covering of good and evil, it was one of my faves. I'm just in no rush for more potential desert exploration. And feel free to comment down below what your ranking would be. If you'd like more videos like this, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm your leafy lore Shiri Minzliff, and I read the Genshin Impact lore so that you don't have to.